is uh, is just to tell you that, that this is a very holy moment, and a, and a, and I don't want I don't want to get caught up in the in the ritual of what I'm about to do because the Lord already instructed me to do this, and and if I could get a little help from Jesse, can you come help me? But um, the Lord told me that we're standing on holy ground. I, and you don't have to do this. Don't worry about take your shoes up. But I, I do need help. I would have done it myself. But um, my allergies have kind of slipped into my uh, my equilibrium. Thank you. And I'm just going to do this because I'm, I'm being obedient. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. There's, there's power in, in obedience. Thank you. Thank you so much. So there, that's done. Um, you know, you know in the scripture that Moses took his shoes off because he was standing on holy ground. The Holy Spirit speaks to you. Just follow the protocol. But otherwise, it's, it's not a it's not a big show. It's just it, it's in the spirit. Mary was talking about enlarging our area of influence, and I heard the Lord say, "Every feet, every place that your feet shall tread." Come on. That God's going to give it to us. And, and, and we just need to be cognizant of that. Reticent of that. Recognize the power and the authority that as sons of God, we walk in. I mean, literally, that as, I mean, as, as Judy and I go to the Great Pine Mills Mall and we walk around and try, for the purpose of trying to, you know, lose some weight and get in. We are literally taking that place. We're taking the cities Hallelujah. by the very power of us walking, yes. taking step yes. after step after step. Yes. And, and I want to make you aware of that. This is part three in the Wealth of the Kingdom, subtitled Becoming a Kingdom Heir. I've had probably, you know, we've had some difficult times in the past and financial straits that we've been in. And God has always been faithful and, and has brought us through and has made a way. And, and I shared with you last week that we had a, a we were in, in desperate need. I appeal to your to your intellect, and, and, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But but um, ironically, you know, as I was driving in this morning, I was I was thinking about the, the whole, and I was I was kind of getting a little overwhelmed. But immediately, and, and I'm telling you, it was it was by the Spirit. The, it was like the Spirit within me rose up so strongly, and I welled up in tears, and I just said, "But Father, nothing is impossible for you. I have my God who is for me and not against me, and He says, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for Thomas, and they are to prosper him and to bless him and God to increase him." And I was just so stirred, and I said, "Why sit I here feeling sorry for myself when I?" Okay, well. 
accessing the wealth of the kingdom is to change. Amen. That's the first thing. Change the way I think about money. Change the way I think about people with money. Change the way I think about sowing the seed. Change the way I think about God giving me instruction to give this away even when I need, when I'm in lack. Change the way you perceive things. I was seeing it as, oh my God, this is hard, this is difficult, and my kids need this, my kids need that, how are we going to make, how are we going to, and God said, am I not sufficient? And I'm telling you, inside of me, something rolled up and said, oh my God, my God, my God, my God, and it was a, ah, an aha moment of, my God is great, nothing is too difficult. Why am I sitting here sweating this out? Why am I freaking out? I'm a tither. I'm a seed sower. I give first fruits. I give offerings. I put everything I give, the shirt off my back. I'm not going to sit here and worry and fret and be moved by things. Amen. you got to change your attitude toward people around you. Because you never know who could be the instrument that God will use to bless you. It could be your very own wife. Thank the Lord for my wife. She's been a blessing sometimes. But a lot of times she's like, I ain't giving you nothing. And it might be because of my influence on her. Hello. Change the way that you not, not only view the way you view money, but the way you view God yeah. and money. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Don't just change the way you view money, but change the way you view God and money, or God with money, or God and, or money connected to God. Come on. All right. Because it is He that giveth thee power to get wealth. Thank you, God is the one that gives us power wanting to get well. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, 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 being, I'm straight up. Yesterday I was decreeing, declaring, praying, and, and asking of a boldly saying, God, give us the hidden treasures in dark places. I said, God, ju ju look, come on, look at me. Look at me. Loose those things that are, that there's treasures that we don't even know about. That we don't even know. Oh, you're, you're doing it. I thought I had something. She's like, well, yes, yeah, so bring it on. She was receiving it. What, what I got? A bug. Amen. Hey, hey, see, see, God, I, I was asking God, give us the hidden. It's, a treasure is something you don't even know exists. You hear me? A treasure is something that is hidden somewhere. It's locked up. It's like opening up a book that you bought at a garage sale and you find some kind of bond or some kind of a bill 